Hello there everyone and welcome to the start of a new campaign in Red Flood in which we're playing as everyone's favorite country in the Caucasus. Sometimes the Caucasus society, but we live in a society but first the Red Prince. The best restaurant in Tbilisi welcomed the group of high-ranking party bureaucrats despite Mayakovsky's insistence on the revolutionary asceticism. Many couldn't resist spending their time with fine food and wine. Among the group was Dmitry Mirsky, an original if controversial figure. As a former white guard officer, still clinging to some nationalist ideals, the hard left of the party mistrusted him. Others thought that he was a visionary who achieved a historical synthesis of thought. He found many followers captiv captivated by the vision of a universal empire building and directing life, spreading infinitely in time and space. The man who was a source of these grand ideals was often described as unremarkable. A well-mannered man, known for his kindness and love of beauty, stood in stark contrast to the Bolshevik thugs that were his allies. A doctor on the table faded into silence. Smirsky was to make a toast. He began speech. Comrades, my friends, as the days of the elections come closer, it's become clear that a revolution needs a change. Our situation stabilized, yet a new direction is to guide us into the future. For there are yet many tasks which achieve before us. With all respect to Comrade Mayakovsky this year, I will break the policy of unconditional support and declare my own candidacy for the post of the chairman. For this occasion, I raise a toast. Long live the revolution, long live the motherland, long live Eurasia. Long live Eurasia, but we live in a society, like I said. A nation in the west of the east feasts on institutions and are filled with national pride, but after the Feast of stagnation comes the famine of change, the visionary. Velimir Klebnikov, though he was one of the most famous men in Kavkaz, couldn't ever master his own apartment. He was frantically and frantically searching for a lost page in his flat. It stashed it somewhere, he was sure of it, but he, in the organized chaos of his apartment, it could be anywhere. Organized might be generous, though. About 30 minutes into a search, Klebnikov Cut a glimpse of the morning newspaper. Dmitry Mirsky announced his candidacy for chairman. Upon seeing his headline, Velomir was struck by a bout of electricity, a euphoric mania drowning his spirit. He realized with increasing excitement that this has been what he was been looking for. He knew what needed to be done. He phoned for David Berlick, uh, Berliuk with haste, and in a frantic speech told his friend, I have a new work, and I need you to help the public publish it. Kavkaz will be my work. Modify the officer corps? We already have. Not much here. We do have 50, though. Army planning, plus point one two, not bad. The captain of the state, though. Mayakovsky walked into the office, chewing on the ever-present cigarette in his mouth. Another bulk of papers. He hated this, this, like this like nothing else. If he get ordered to burn all bureaucracy this day, many doubts haunted the man who, to the public, was a steel joint of the revolution. Sometimes he wanted to retire for the love of God, but he was over 40. This is not fitting for a gleaming future estate. Every new gray hair instead terrified him. He quietly wished for a heroic death in battle that could free him from this shame. But he also had responsibilities. The weight of the revolution laid heavily on his back, and he knew that he had to carry it. For who will replace him? Mirsky? He has the right spirit, but he is too meek, still spoiled by aristocratic roots. He would make a good bureaucrat, but not a captain to lead his people into the fiery forge of battle. Klebnikov? He's still some kind of genius, but this man can't remember to wash himself. No, we don't need a schizophrenic madman ordering us around. Mayakovsky knew this too well. Every day, he had to endure this pain. He had to forge his will into the hard iron. Hard iron. He won't turn his back like a coward. He will finish revolution or die trying the utopia or death. Plus 1.6, an event the first day. Um, I'll probably go with army planning, just because even though planning speeds aren't great, 0.12 is not bad, and I actually want to get some sort of benefit besides that one. Um, Chizda or Makhev? Oh, that's probably something more defense, not bad. And you get some on, I mean, I'll probably go with this guy, but I'm going to get anything first. Army reformer, no army planning first, probably. We're already on early mobilization, that's not bad. But I don't really want to start working on some army XP, so. An eventful first day. Othar Kipani has been 11. When a revolution gripped Kavkaz, 15 years later, his village would choose to send him to Tbilisi to represent them in the Supreme Soviet. As he approached the doors of the Congress, he took a deep breath and entered. Upon entering, the first thing that hit him was the heat. Something about the energy these men was made a building into the middle of a city frozen in winter feel like the sun. The second thing that hit him was the sound. He could hear what seemed like a million desperate groups of men and women on the verge of brawling inside the assembly over who should be the next chairman. Hardliners swearing eternal fealty to Mayakovsky, upstarts carving Eurasian Mursky into the hearts, and anarchist radicals and another lunatic carrying Klebnikov and their madness on their shoulders. You couldn't imagine better company. Yeah. After everyone settled down and the role was taken, uh, voting began. Comrade Kipani, who do you cast your vote for? Klebnikov and Lightning? Mayakovsky and Utopia. Mursky and the Stars? Well, I've been recommended for this campaign. Oh, that's really cool. Accelerations Party. That's really cool. Uh, and then there's this guy, the Soviet Alex Mursky. We're going to go with Mayakovsky because as much as I love saying Klebnikov, we'll go with him someday uh, later. The father of our revolution stands unshaken, leading us to the dawn of the new world. No other candidate is proven worthy. The people of Kavkaz uh, thrust no one but the original guide of the revolution. Nothing but Mayakovsky's will and vision can be forged the forge of our destiny. 
Our eyes are workers of the world. Our captain will lead you to become the gods of this world. Beware all forces of reaction. Cower before the coming soon. Roll of the future. Look at that peepee. Uh, Promethean. Marxism. Ooh. Full breath of life. Prometheans. Pro pro Prometheans. No, proletarians into thinkers. Ooh, get more political power. I like that a lot. Stability. More war sport. Military atheism. Proletarians into thinkers. There's no revolution of the body in the state without a revolution of the mind and heart. The intellectual development of the proletariat is imperative to avoid capitalism from taking root again in the minds of mankind. We're going to become more than just another social state, though. We'll become a utopia for writers, artists, philosophers, but also for the common little man. We intend to kill every uh, Philistine and reaction who stand in the way of the workers' enlightenment. Mass assault. Probably not mass assault. It's, it's an okay doctrine. I don't mind stability. That's good. Plus 10% is not bad. Construction speed's pretty good, too. Um, I want to go with this one. Or, what is this? Mold the living social body. More political power? Construction speed? Just by Oracle's time? The masses of Kaz are already awakened by the revolutionary fire. Now it's time to give shape to this enthusiasm. We will beat the hot iron of society with a hammer of the state until the utopia of our dreams comes. First plans of all the grandiose social engineering projects are already in motion. It is time to speed things up. Let the comrades in the West faster. Civilian industries, technologies, weekly, more weekly war sports. Sounds like fun. Accelerationism. Um, this stuff's not bad. Carpet bombing. I love cats. I have a problem. I like cats too much. Futures and promoted. Avant-garde communism. Ooh, consumer goods factories goes down by five percent. Even more political power. Holy crap. Well. I guess we'll get this one because you get more consumer goods. We are, while we are futurists, we are also equal parts Bolsheviks. We hold full allegiance to the two most revolutionary projects of modernity. Only in a synthesis can they real, both realize themselves. For what is futurism? When humanity still toils under the tyranny of capital, its creative force is enslaved. And what is communism if the ghosts of old cultures still haunt the proletariat? Let's bury the past as we will bring about a new world. Sounds good to me. Revolutionary Japan declared war on itself. Nice. Uh, we'll wait for that stuff. Honestly, if we had to go through all of these, I'm going to go with you anyways. Naval stuff probably won't really matter. Sword efficiency, we're probably not going to use carriers, so... No speed 7%. Uh, Avant-garde communism. And universal poetic education. Ooh, just thought time goes way down. More civvies. Oh, but a good research slot, though. Ooh. Ooh. That's really nice. Um, as much as I want that... Oh, we can just this one next. Yeah, I might as well. New social science. The liberated society needs to be remade into the way it learns about the world, too. What the bourgeois found immoral and insane should be no concern for the new man of the future. All the wild and crazy ideas are now to be considered. All idols and taboos of the old shall perish. And when we bury the old, we can begin the real construction. Many of our academics dream of an integrated, uh, organic, and holistic science. In the spirit of Bogdanov and Tselovsky, uh, let this be the beginning of something even greater. And Korea's killing itself, but you know what? Who doesn't love it when Korea kills itself? We all love it. Um, five is not bad. We have four factories, which sucks. Uh, let's go with two there first. We have literally no resources, which also sucks quite a bit. Um, yeah, we literally don't have anything here. Georgia? Well, Georgia. Um, just pretend to be, yeah, Georgia kind of kind of sucks right now. No wonder we get a whole lot of stuff here. A lot of army speed, but never enough. Never enough for me. Um, expert focus. Honestly, you might as well just go free trade, because you already have nothing here anyways, right? Screw it, we're going free trade. This is one of the rare times I'm actually going to go free trade. We can build things slightly faster. Free trade, avant-garde communism. Go figure. New social science theory in the solar cycle. Um, new Soviet man. Oh, that's cool. Uh, what is this? I've got to get through all this stuff, I think, to get down here, so... Oh, no, it requires just one of the following. Okay. Uh, civilian factory would be nice. Even more political power, research speed. Construction speed. Still attack and defense. Universal poetic education. Our current education system is very basic and lacks the flair of futurist curriculum. Education in the poetic arts is the right of every cause, cause citizen, and we shall leave the other subjects up to those who wish to create private schools. Might as well. Hmm. Stability. We need more command power. Nuclear war sport would be very nice, actually. You know what? Screw it. We'll do it once. Why not? 
Persian Civil War. Sounds like fun. Better for them to engage in that than us, of course. We get almost two a day. Theory of the solar cycle. Alexander Chivasky. A biologist and astronomer recently presented his novel theory at the Proletarian University of Tbilisi. Studying the history of solar activity, he found that the highest number of sunspots corresponded to the time of the most tumultuous events in human history. Investigating it further, a whole new field of heliobiology was founded. There seems to be a certain connection between solar energies and the behavior of living organisms that can have catastrophic consequences. Attempts at taming these energies through creation of artificial sources of radiation were already made, and the results are surprisingly successful. Well, we witness a new field of engineering, too. Astrology is making a comeback. We shall see. Artillery is fine. Guns. Let's go with that one. Roughly two political power a day. Holy crap. Now we're not even done. Cloud of industry and electricity. Is there something more beautiful than the force that moves heavy blocks metal to a fury that brings a lion elephant to shame? Can any song rival the knocking of the hammer and the roar of the engine? This beauty is the ultimate expression of human creativity, the great force that tames the dark forces in nature. That brings them into the submission to a perfect order. The engine and the electric line will be the idol towards which all of our state shall thrive. Our shall, shall thrive. Thrive and thrive. Nice. Um... We have no companies. Government? We can sort of use a, a new Caucasian curriculum for us. Uh, the Caucasian lands have always been historically regarded as intellectual backwater with a lack of road network, language, and tribal barriers making it very hard to even achieve a secondary education. If we want to shape a future worthy of men who are destined to shape the society into a higher state of being, we need to invest heavily into the modernization of our school system. First off, we should begin by promoting a more progressive curriculum itself suited to the ideological needs of our nation. The battle we are fighting right now begins in the heads of our people. If we do not act accordingly, we will lose it. Literature must be the focus of whatever choice we may pick, as we can best be described as a country founded by writers and intellectuals. The curriculum itself is a feat of literary prowess, the indomitable human ease. Ilya Ivanov, a biologist, in the pursuit of pushing the boundaries of new social science, attempted a most cre uh, curious experiment. A group of female chimpanzees brought from Africa was to be artificially inseminated with human sperm. The goal is to create a new sort of man, opening a way to other methods of shaping human bodies. Unfortunately, the experiment had no effect, as all attempts in, in, of insemination were rejected by chimpanzees' bodies. This surprised most of the biologists, as in some really uh, br uh, breath of relief, thinking of the horrors this operation could bring. Unsurprising fiasco. Onwards to Utopia, though. Though the famine ravages the stomach, and soon the seeds of change are fed in water by time, and when the crops grow properly, the stomach is filled once more. A uh, revolution of the spirit. A mere dictatorship of the proletariat is not enough. Even when we hold the reins of power, our struggle still continues on the battlefield of the human, sign, human soul and mind. And the struggle needs its own revolution, and bourgeois thinking has to be completely eradicated. Old idols must be thrown into the dustbin of history, and we aren't afraid to fight as fiercely as we do with our enemies in flesh. Let us violently pave our way to a new, fiery, futurist culture. Revive our... Another one? Whoa. Um, heist of the century. I mean, I do want to go to war as fast as we possibly can. Armenia? Huh. Clock strikes 13. March north. Annihilate Kolchakrakrasi. Spain's killing itself. But do you get any cores? Oh, do this. Introduce the net. Interesting. Mobile warfare, mass assault. Well, I don't want to do either one of those two. Knights of Utopia. Un How many research slots do we get? We're already on extensive conscription. That's not good. Holy crap. Um, well, I definitely don't want to do mass assault. Um, as the world review our economy, I guess. The semi feudal capitalism of the Russian Empire is sufficient up until now, but we're quickly beginning to see the unpoetic results of allowing the system to go unguided. It's abundantly clear that the economy needs to change. The only question is are how and to what extent. Um, political power, construction speed, better consumer goods, political power, construction speed, or co consumer goods factories, really. Well, that's not bad. More manpower wouldn't be bad. Vertov? It's easier to say your last name. Anyone over here? Um, political power gain encryption. Research speed. I like the, the encryption. This looks easier to say. Basil. Economy minister. Transylvania conspiracy can succeed. Um, this is one I would probably never choose. So let's not choose that one. Support equipment, infantry equipment. 
Mm, production costs. Eh. If it was refiners, I would probably include that one too, but let's go with you. Keep on for now. Have your economy. Holy crap, we have so much political power, it's not even funny. Trucks, good. Trains, armor trains, yes. Support equipment, yes. Government, uh, monthly opinion, don't care. Just follow rules down minus 5%, sure, why not? And over here, jobless progressive party wins American election. Okay. Lose political power. Lose construction speed. Lose military factory construction speed, but more civilian. I don't want her political power too much, but we already get over two a day, so. Berliuk? It's easier to say. So we still get two a day. Uh, review our economy and out of the world. The revolution was never meant to end the borders of this one small country. Our ambitions are all universal. We have to be watchful observers, know and prepare for the time we strike with unrivaled force. We should take an appro active approach to the world and look for every opportunity that can bring us closer to our glorious crusade. Of course, we'll do that one too. Full breath of lice ties to the century. Uh, we'll get to that one in just a little bit. So let's take a look here. Uh, first, at research. Oh my gosh, five research slots. Basically, 1937 already. Holy crap. Yeah, we'll do that one first. Um. Introduce the NEP. Yeah, we'll probably go with acceleration, some plan economy, the regulation, public works, technocratic planning, well for investment. Never, never, Zubatsu of China. You know what? I'll let you guys decide. Which way should we go? Introduce the NEP, begin the first five year plan, as well as uh, allow foreign investment versus steel grip of the proletariat, and national trade union versus another. Z or Zubatov China. Let me know which one we should do over there. Um, so, which one should we do? I'll let you guys decide. You know, I feel like we should probably do. Oh, I don't know. I like the technocratic plan because you get more political power. I think that's the way I kind of want to go, but we'll see. I'll let you guys decide, like I said. So, um, so let's see. We could go mass assault. We could. But it looks the same as vanilla's mass assault. So, I'm thinking nah. You get a lot of population, don't get me wrong. We might need all that population too. But you also get some population with desperate defense. You get up to 5% more down here, so. I'm gonna go with mobile warfare, probably. Probably. But we're not gonna make tanks. Fire the revolution, though. Hmm. Screw up mobile warfare. Hey, hey, hey. In search of revolutionary fervor, groups of futurist youth came to the streets. Bombs and gasoline cocktails were thrown at old churches and palaces. Youthful slogans were shouted, comrades united in their acts of destruction. No longer shall the shadows of old towers over the New York man. This gleaming giant that will cast off all traditions of pursuit of creation. Wild songs of steel and lightning drowned out the meek church chants. All over the country, new life animates the masses. Red flags of the society flew high as the crowds listened to Mayakovsky's fiery speeches in them. They found the most sublime homilies in the new faith. Not enough. Come on, vanguard of the future. Dare. Stomp the bourgeois. Enough with the law of Adam and Eve. Um, a heavenly goal we have towards a new world, comrades. And when we're done, we'll make mountains monuments to ourselves. Churches to the sacred deed, and we will worship the hate and that, the love that brought us here. We will be the masters of the golden age. Away with the old. Uh, Man-made miracles. Mistaken are those antiquarians who believe the modern world is devoid of wonder. Their malaise and moodiness made them unable to see the true width of the modern mystery, so they desperately searched for it in their imagined past. But we shall look no further than the progress of modern physics and engineering to encounter the wildest of fairy tales. The roar of the car, the real relative time, the astonishing speed of the locomotive, these are all the myths of the modern man, no less profound than the tales of the ancients. We don't need any god or tradition to reach into the world, we will do it ourselves with our labor, we will build a new world. Where the failed tale has become the truth. Wondrous machines will bring people back to life. Rockets will penetrate the sky. Cities will climb above the clouds. And real souls will be brought from circuits and stones. Promethean Marxism. Bound to the mountain of the Caucasus. We're not like the Prometheus of the ancient myth. Like him. We're not unlike him. But like him, our task is nothing but less than a total uplifting of humanity from its animal state. Through, though, through communism, we won't create only abundance, but a new type of civilization will come. Bound by, to no god or king, we will become the gods ourselves. Everything we do for the new era of unlimited creative potential that awaits around the corner. War against God. We declare war against God in the heavens. No longer shall we bow our heads to moral powers. We stand on our own as men. Unite in struggle. We create a world of our own. We reject any religion other than our brotherhood. With the fire of artillery and the thunder of guns, we will wage a war against all lackeys of the tyrant in heaven, till the old man himself perishes from every mine on earth. 
in the highest of the century. In our position, we have to fight like foxes, looking for every opportunity and striking quickly when possible. Our taking of Moscow will be like a heist. We'll come when they least expect it, and seize the power quickly and dirtily. The Great Inquisitor roars and bellows, spewed from the broken windows of an old church in the middle of nowhere like the noise of a wildebeest escape in the cage. Inside the long abandoned building, a legion of youths occupy the pews in which old Georgian women once rotted away in, but long before the Civil War. One of the young men, finally dressed in a three-piece suit, bawled from a seat. The defendant has not appeared before court. I say death penalty for him. The laughter that boomed across the stone halls of the church was enough to make it quake and shiver like a living organism. Successive shouts and screams followed the comrade's wit to the guillotine with him, bring a priest. I think he's scared. As the charges and accusations kept on growing in size and gravity, another man rose from his seat, and the yells of the wild beast ceased in an instant. Tall and burly, every eye in the room closely followed him like the planets orbit the sun. The poet, the revolutionary, beating heart of Kavkaz. Vladimir Mayakovsky drew a devilish smirk, the very same he had been carrying for a lifetime, and began to say his closing statement as judge of the impromptu revolutionary tribunal. Friends, some of our comrades deny that exists. How foolish. Sounds of approval. Whistling and clapping, yet we know better than him. Or than them, don't we? We know God is everywhere. God is in the whip that cracks on the backs of workers in Petrograd. God is in the poisoned tongues of landlords and parasites. God is the industrialist, the slave driver, the general and the priest. The evidence of his crimes is universal and omnipresent. Some especially ecstatic men had even fired off their guns in the air during the speech, as the holsters or hollers and the screams of the crowd were so unbearably loud that one would believe an earthquake was almost about to swallow the old church. When the tribunal calmed down, Maya Kofsky began speaking again. I was sentenced a criminal, the tyrant, to death. So the people of the world may know themselves as tyrant tyrannicides. Tyrannicides. However, it's obvious God knows how to come back from the dead, does he not? Roaring approval and affirmation again. In the name of mankind, has since gotten to banishment. When the free people of the world has liberated itself from the yoke of slavery, then every, when every inch of land is as godless as it has always been, when God has no chance of returning from the grave, then only will then will we turn our heads to him. God will be executed like a counter-revolutionary, a traitor to humanity. God must die, and his death will be the life of his work. And right now, we are currently doing what? In the matter of prison. Like Prometheus, our revolution is bound by chains of the Rock of the Caucasus. And it's our greatest desire to light up the flame of the future, so it might shine bright for the whole of humanity. Let's see, break, then, our chains, and spread our wings broadly, racing to the heavens. And fulfill the Transcaucasian promise. Back in 1918, we promised one thing to the workers of Caucasus, and let heavens tremble if we don't deliver. Caucasus will never be free as long as the Menshevik heck hole below is allowed to undercut us, therefore it's... It, has forfeited its right to grace the earth, to arms comrades, to wor arms, workers, and peasantry. We have seven divisions. We need to march in progress. I don't want to lose any more civvies, so we got to work on that. Uh, that too? Cool. How many divisions does Armenia have? Uh, about Roughly about the same amount of manpower, up to two to ten, they've one to five. As, I mean, my main goal would be to cover the entire front line here, if possible. Actually, for this one, we just close out this one for now, or at least we'll leave it like that. All right. <laughs> um, so, snakes in the quarters. The armed wing of Kafkaz society. Because we need some more millies. Holy crap. Any nation or ideology is pointless without the arms to defend it. Our poet warriors with violent minds guided by beautiful thoughts shall crush all who dare to invade our poetic realm, of course. Fuel? Because we can always use more fuel. Yes. Bit of surplus? Yes. Those worse for more stability? Sure, why not? Political power cost, does it really matter to me? Not too much, you know? And that's fine with us. Beautiful. Armed wing of the Kavkaz Society. The clock strikes 13. March north. Sir Edson, we can't really fight the Russian People Peasant Republic. Or the National Republic. Gorkulov. I don't have that many divisions, actually. And we just made another Mountaineer. The Slovak Revolution, eh? Zionist Revolt. Ah, uh, here come the Zionists. Ah, uh, one, two. Overall, this looks bad. We do have a hole up there, which is not good. Field of neighbors, because you can. Um, and fast offensives. Shipyards. Uh, uh, Art of fast offensive. The best defense is a good offense in the area of modern warfare. We should overwhelm our enemies with brutal offensive tactics before they have the chance to muster together proper defense. Because why not? Accelerationism, why not? 1937, of course. More fuel? Sure, why not? Uh, equipment conversion speed, we don't need that one quite yet. Planes, we're looking pretty good over here. Ship-wise, I, mean, I guess we could do some ship stuff. 37, though. We're looking pretty good. Don't probably need anti any sort of anti-tank. We can do that for funsies. And Mountaineers. Why not? 
we will need one more division. But I do want to do that one. Before we go to war, uh, truck cost... Uh, oh, wow. Knights of Utopia, way more population. Our elite mountaineers would be nice, but I want these millies. Oh, but you know the resource out here. And two more. Well... Oh, let's go with this one. Produce Kavkazian equipment. Too much of our equipment is left over from the Russian Imperial arsenals in Georgia or imported from our benefactors in avant-garde France. We're going to begin producing our own arms so that our soldiers can know the satisfaction of holding a Kavkazian rifle and dispatching Kavkaz enemies with it. Most important thing, can we hold the entire line? Because their divisions are looking pretty bad. In all honesty, probably. So let's go and get some entrenchment. Um, that doesn't help us out that much. We'll probably not go Blitzkrieg. I just don't think we'll be able to get tanks. As much as I want them. And let's give us more organization for infantry as well, so. And that looks pretty good. Hopefully we can get cores in these areas too. That would be the best. Nice. Well, let's go ahead and save. They're going to start attacking us like crazy, probably. And we'll enjoy ourselves with this. Maybe France will want to get involved and help us out, maybe. I want to make it in circle. I want these guys to get involved first. Can you guys actually do anything here? The colony has been called into war, so be it, whatever. You actually come down here, that's fine. You should be able to do okay here. In theory, you should. Establish war room, yes. Yes. War economy, at the very least. Produce causing equipment. Uh, motorization contracts with Italy. With all due respect to French automobiles, there's no doubt that the best cars made in Italy. It would benefit both of the nations to establish contact with Italian motor companies to produce motorized equipment for our army. So now we're really out of stuff here. But we still have no uh, things, which is not good. Can you just take the territory? Is that just possible? Especially sending horses that way? Could use way more command power, though. Can you make it an encirclement here? That'd be kind of impressive. But we'll go with mobile infantry, of course. Amount of manpower. Um, occupied territories. Civilian oversight's fine. Uh, use these guys. Yeah. We call them Drons, because I was too lazy to change your name. But Drons are pretty good. <coughs> uh, you know what? Let everyone go then. I'm changing programs. It's fine. We don't really need to do that one, but we'll do it anyways because we can. Beautiful. If you hit them harder, faster, they won't be able to do anything. Do we lose a division? Where do you guys go? Oh, you're up there. Okay. Go to Yerevan. Pass a sooner. Don't really need it, but you know what? With basically we're gonna have six research slots. That's kind of insane already. So. Oh, well, so close. Where do you guys stop? And I'll go in. Alright then. Thank you very much. We own a lot of states after this. Okay. Well, alright then. Motorize, yeah. Uh, we got plenty of guns now. I would like some casts as well, but we have like no resources. Um, railway guns, anti-air perhaps as well. Um, it's pretty cheap if we do this. Pick one. Clock strikes 13. Our elite mountaineers. Ooh, that's not bad. Plus 50% encore manpower, wow. Uh, Marley Mountaineers. The Caucasus Mountains occupy a vast portion of a country which could normally disallow true movements in the regions. However, we invest in creating dedicated mountaineer forces. Our armies can easily traverse the mountains, as well as taking advantage of the high ground they provide. Why not? A god dang. Another research slot. That's so strong. I love it. These aren't cores. Are they? They are cores. Okay, so they're no longer so much manpower now. Well, this one's cores. Um, this stuff over here... These are cores. That's very nice. This is not. That sucks. But we, why do you have so much compliance? They must have already had that compliance. Got a lot of compliance already. 
Very nice. Our elite mountaineers, and then boost soldiers' morale. When we say that soldiers must know their place, we mean this in a positive connotation. The average soldier should see himself as a noble knight, fighting for something beyond himself. Soldiers and people sh uh, shall be made aware that our army is all that stands between our utopia and destruction. As long as the Turks don't want to really attack us right now, I'm okay with that. Yeah, these guys are not good enough. Um, artillery. Engineers. We need more sport equipment and artillery. That's fine. Uh, we got plenty of guns. Really make ourselves a little beefier. Because we like beef. We like beef on this channel. Down here, that's fine. 38. There we go. You can do that anyways, because you can. You know, training programs, early mountaineers. So, how much do we actually extract? Not very much, and a lot of fuel, but we only have 28. Honestly, just keep building for now. I want to build a lot. I mean, I'm talking a lot. Could use more resources, but what else is new? Logistics, probably. What else we got here? I'm not even reading this. Just do it all. I don't care. Uh, integrate the conquered manpower. We have no intention of excluding or ostracizing the people we conquer, for we know that the whole world cannot be ruled by Russians and Georgians alone. Local cultures are to be treated with respect. All other nationalities shall be made equal in the eyes of the army. You are all equally worthless. Yeah, get more output. Any more trucks? Guns are fine-ish for now. Integrate all that stuff. That'd be really good. Um, that's really nice. Way more political power. Jesus. Something greater than simply victorious capital. Well, I'll see what that does. Expand Sukumi and Batumi shipyards. Although we are not exactly a naval powerhouse, we need Navy Defender Holdings on the Black Sea Coast. The shipyards operating Sukumi and Batumi must be invested in and expanded for the sake of survival. Naval Doctrine Dispute. To surprise, the seemingly uh, innocuous choice of Naval Doctrine has become a full-blown dispute among our military and theorists. The choice has now been left to the leaders of the state, and the choice we make will, not, will dictate not only the theorists we favor, but also whether our naval defense will be sufficient. Air Doctrine Coffee Break. We weren't even planning a developing... Uh, uh, planning on developing a proper air force, and air doctrines come up during coffee break with national debates. The choice is not quite as consequential as our native doctrine, but picking the right doctrine could offer us a significant air uh, combat advantage. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we'll invade the Russian National Peasant Republic. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.